love of our Father is so strong that it reaches through the darkness, it reaches through the chaos, and it finds us where we are. So this morning we sing about that great love of our Creator, the love that our Father has for us.
have heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I Tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Cause you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am.
Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Randy Mason. Welcome to Elements Church Online. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining. Um, as you can see, I'm out here in beautiful PA um, at the Dasco Bible Camp with the family and with the church. And um, it's been it's been a wonderful time. And um, yeah, I'm thrilled to, to be here and I'm thrilled to share this message with you. If you're taking notes, the title of today's message is Ready, Set, Rest. That's right. Ready, set, rest. All right. I preached this message uh, at Elements Church uh, maybe a year or so ago. And um, it's as pertinent today as it was then. Um, this, this this concept of rest is as pertinent today as, as it was thousands of years ago. As it was, uh, you know, when God created the heavens and the earth. And the scriptures say, you know, that, that God rested. Um so this is a super important uh, topic, and that's why I felt led to um, to share with you guys again, all right? So, yo, rest is one of the most common themes throughout all of Scripture, yet, ironically, it's also one of the most slept-on concepts and commandments in the entire Bible. Now, I'm not only referring to the kind of rest that we experience when we sleep, I'm speaking about the kind of rest that we experience when we are satisfied, uh, when we are secure and when we are sure, right? The kind of rest that we experience when we feel safe, when we are satisfied, when we are sure, and when we are secure, okay? Spiritual rest, soul rest, internal uh, rest. Um, you know, I remember one time I was teaching, uh, uh, I was teaching a class somewhere and uh, I was, it was a hip hop workshop and one of the young uh, uh, men fell asleep in class. And I was like, okay, you know, maybe he's tired, whatever, boom, boom, boom. And, you know, didn't make a big deal of it. After class, the uh, their teacher that was in the room uh, that's with the, that, that, that uh, works with those students on a regular basis shared with me, she was like, you know, sometimes, you know, our students have a lot going on and, um, and when, when they feel safe and secure in an environment, sometimes they fall asleep. And um, that, that, that just stuck with me. Um, really? They come into church. Welcome. Come on in. Find a seat. Um, so the young man fell asleep. Uh, because maybe he felt he felt safe, and 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 so the, the the kind of rest that I'm talking about is the kind of rest that you experience when you feel safe, when you feel secure, when you feel satisfied, when you feel sure. Okay, somebody say rest, rest. All right, the quality of the rest of your life depends on the quality of the rest in your life. All right, the quality of rest, the quality of the rest of your life. Y'all gonna have to quiet down now. The quality of the rest of our lives depends on the quality of rest in our lives. All right. Let's read chapter Deuteronomy, uh, chapter three, verse 20. Until the Lord gives rest to your brothers and your sisters as he has given to you. And they also occupy the land that the Lord your God gives them beyond the Jordan. Then each of you may return to his or her possession, which I have given you. All right. Uh, let's say a prayer. Father. I pray that you bless your word and your people today. I pray that you uh, uh, help us to to rest, God, to remember to rest, um, and to um, to experience the kind of peace and satisfaction, and and and, and assurance and safety in Christ um, that produces rest, God. Um, I pray for everybody who's listening and who's watching, God, and and um. I just pray by your spirit, God, that this word would be life giving, that this word would be refreshing, that this word would administer healing and hope to us all today and that we leave better than the way in which we came. Um, and everybody in the pl place said, amen. We pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. Yo, so I only have three points. I say that as if I ever have more than three points, <laughs> but three points today, and that is God's primary promise to his people is rest. 
point number one. God's primary promise to his people is rest. Point number two, the process of possessing and protecting that rest is faith. Faith is the way that we acquire and the way that we uh, uh, kind of maintain um, rest in our lives, right? Because faith is knowing whose you are and knowing who you are, right? And 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 without that, we we can't we can't we can't find rest. And point number three is when you enter into God's rest, don't forget about the rest of us. All right. When you enter into God's rest, don't forget about the rest of us. Super important. Um, yo. All right. So. Jay-Z, uh, rapper Jay-Z ha had a lyric in a song. Uh, the song was Empire State of Mind. And the lyric said, MDMA got you feeling like a champion. The city never sleeps, better slip you an ambient. So he's talking about these and these synthetic drugs and things um, uh, that, that people, uh, you know, take and use to, uh, either to, um, you know, uh, on the, to, to stay up and to, to not miss out and to try and like, be everywhere and do everything and then on the flip side you know trying to take another drug to help you rest right um and so he he, he rhymed these lyrics describing uh our city new york city and it's actually a pretty accurate description of a city um that is most popularly uh, or is popularly referred to as a city that never sleeps the city that never sleeps as if that's a good thing the city that never sleeps um you know it's a place where people uh, and it's not unique to new york city this is everywhere this is a human thing this is a human condition thing um but nevertheless the city is a place where people are restless where we are discontented where we're unsatisfied um and, and it, where, where something as natural as sleep is really difficult to achieve um you know, it's a place where we reduce happiness to an hour and a drink, right? Happy hour. Uh, a place where we think that the volume of our work determines the value of our worth, which is why many of us go so hard and work so hard um, because we think that our work determines our worth, but it does not. Um, a place where we look forward to eight days out of 30, where weekends are the highlight and weekdays are weak. W-E-A-K days, um, a place where families are fractured and marriages are marred because we are too afraid. Somebody say afraid, afraid. We are too afraid to rest. And so instead we run and run and run and eventually ruin everything. Listen, last night there was a healing service here at the Dasco. It was beautiful, uh, beautiful message. And, and I, at the end, they invited people to come up for prayer. So I, I went up to be prayed for. Um, and, and, and that's exactly what I pray for. Rest, rest, the rest, the kind of rest that uh, we only experience when we are satisfied, when we are sure, when we are safe, God, uh, you know, in, in Christ. Um, because apart from those things, it's, it's just so difficult to rest. And again, I'm not only talking about sleep. I'm talking about rest, right? I could sleep eight, nine, ten hours and not be rested, right? Because in my head there's unrest in my heart there's unrest and, and all, most all of it usually stems from a place of fear all right so um we only really rest well when we are satisfied safe and sure all right and and god um god desires that we rest all right um, Proverbs chapter three, verse 24. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Amen. That's, that's a passage that I need to read before bed every night. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. All right. Sleep is only sufficient and sweet when we are satisfied, safe, and sure. Psalm 127 verse 2. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For God grants sleep to those who he loves. Right? And so it's saying that, you know, we're working, you know, extra overtime, getting up super early, going to bed super late, burning the candles at both end. And the scripture here is saying we're doing that in vain because God grants sleep to those whom he loves all right 
there are two words that I want to look at, um, two uh, Hebrew words for rest in the Old Testament. Sometimes they use synonymously, um, although they can have slight distinctions at times. Nevertheless, one of the words is sabbat, right? S-A-B-B-A-T, sabbat, which is where we get the word Sabbath, uh, which means to cease from work, to cease from work. And it can imply rest, but not necessarily so. Right. In other words, the reason being is that we can cease from literal literal work and still not rest. Right. How many times how many of you have had a day off from your job and still been totally, you know, uh, and, and still have not been able to rest. Right. Um, so to cease from work is not necessarily to rest. Right. But it could mean to rest. The other word that I want to look at and the one actually that I would like to focus on is Nuak. Right. And, um, you know, my pronunciation is probably not spot on, but that's neither here nor there. You get the point. Um, and this Hebrew word, nuach, means to rest, to remain, to be quiet. Oh, some of my favorite things in the whole wide world. You hear that? That right there. All right. So Nuach occur occurs in the Old Testament approximately 65 times. The first occurrence, guess where that is? Guess where this word rest is first introduced into the Holy Scriptures? Yes, in the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 8, at the very beginning, verse 4. And the ark came to rest on the mountain. Come on now. And the ark came to rest rest on the mountain. Now, this is referring to the story of Noah. If you remember the story of Noah and, and, and how, you know, the earth uh, just became increasingly wicked, exceedingly uh, rebellious toward God. And, 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 and Noah was preaching and trying to get people to turn their hearts toward God and get people to, to, to get right and to repent. And people were just totally, you know, and enemies of God and people were just going absolutely crazy and God sends this flood on the earth and and it's just chaos and the earth is is flooded right and um Noah and his family and 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 some animals you know they get on this boat you know uh and they find refuge on this boat they find security they find um you know uh you know assurance um, and God on this boat gives them everything they need. And so in some sense, I imagine that they found satisfaction, although, you know, the flood was a very difficult thing. So they were on this boat, you know, I don't have to describe it. it just, just imagine, right, what's going on. Um, and, 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 you know, as the earth is being flooded um, and it says that and it says that the ark came to rest. So there was a point in time and, and amidst all of this, you know, the wrath of God happening that the ark came to rest. And the ark is a picture of Christ. The ark, ark is a picture of the cross. OK. Um, and in the ark, on the cross, in Christ, you know, uh, shielded from the wrath of God, kept afloat, uh, you know, um, held, uh, um, you know, by, in, in the hands of God, essentially, we find rest. All right. Point number one, God's primary promise to his people is what? Rest. We see rest in creation. OK, we see rest in the commandments. All right. We see rest in Christ. We see rest on the cross and we see rest in the church. All right. This is super important for us to. Um, it's just super important for us, for us to know, for us to know that rest is that important. Rest is so important to God that it is a common uh, theme throughout the scripture. Right. We see rest in creation, rest in the commandments, rest in Christ and on the cross. We see rest uh, in the church. All right. So let's look at rest in creation genesis chapter 2 verse 2 and 3 by the seventh day god had finished the work and so he rested okay by the seventh day god had finished the work and so he rested check it out god had finished the work and so he rested uh if you remember what jesus said when he was on the cross thousands of years later he said uh, the words the phrase he said it is finished he finished the work um and therefore he rested and subsequently we 
can rest when we place our faith in Christ because he finished the work in Genesis. God said it says that God had finished the work and so he rested. You can rest when the work is done. You can rest when the work is complete. You can rest uh, because when the work is done and when the work is complete, you can experience satisfaction. You can experience uh, security. You can experience uh, safety. You can experience assurance because the work has been done. The work is completed, right? So there's no stress or unrest. Um, and so, so we see rest right there in creation. Um, all right, so we see rest in creation. We also see rest in the commandments. Uh, Exodus, in the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8, the scripture says, Remember, somebody say, Remember, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. The Sabbath day was a day of rest. All right, and, 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 and the Bible and God is saying, telling us to remember, remember to rest. And that's a commandment. All right, that's not a. Uh, you know, that's not a suggestion. That's a commandment. So we see rest in creation. We see rest in the commandments. We see rest in Christ. Um, Jesus said in Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Oh, Lord, have mercy. One of my favorite scriptures in the whole wide world, because very often times I find myself weary and burdened um, by the pressures of life, by expectations that I place upon myself, by my own uh, sin, uh, and, and, and just uh, my heart and my mind is, is, is burdened and weary. And Jesus promises me that he uh, will give me rest. And so I come to Christ for rest. Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So we see rest in creation. We see rest in commandments. We see rest in Christ. All right? And we see rest in the church. Hebrews chapter 4, um, speaking to the people of God, speaking to the church, um, it says this, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. Be careful to not fall short of rest, of the gift of rest, of the commandment of rest, right? Wow. All right. So God's primary promise for his people is rest. And we know that because he, he instituted rest in the very beginning in creation. Um, he reinforced rest in the commandments. Um, he... <laughs> He, uh, um, you know, uh, again, um, uh, uh, exemplifies rest in Christ and, and the cross and the finishing of the work, the same way God finished the work and he rested during creation. Uh, when Christ uh, finished the work on the cross, the work of, of redeeming uh, mankind, of uh, reconciling us to God, uh, that great work was completed on the cross and Jesus said it is finished and therefore we can find rest and Jesus said come to me all you who are burdened and weary and I will give you rest how could he promise that how could he say I will give you rest how could how could he give me rest it's because he finished the work he completed the work on the cross and he knows God knows that the ultimate unrest is is, is being unsure uh, of, of, about our identity, about our purpose, about our lives, about eternity, about, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, 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 <clears throat> excuse me, unrest comes from being um, unsatisfied and unsure and unsafe and all these things that apart from Christ are uh, prevalent, right? But in Christ, in that finished work that was completed on the cross, we can find safety, security, satisfaction, and assurance, and therefore find rest, all right? Um, and then we see rest in the church. Again, you know, I just read one passage, but if you read all throughout the New Testament, you're gonna find rest as a major theme, all right? Point number two, the process of possessing and protecting that rest is called faith. Why do I say that? Because the only way that we can truly rest is when we know who we are and whose we are. When we know who we are and whose we are, we can rest, let me tell you, I be sometimes I get in my head and I get in my heart and it's difficult for me to rest. And in those moments it's because I'm not remembering who I am and who God is. I'm not remembering, uh, you know, that God loves me and that God got me and that, 
um, and that I'm uh, loved by God and that I'm, uh, 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 you know, ha that I have worth and value. I'm not thinking about those things when I'm in my head, when I'm afraid, when I'm anxious, when I'm depressed, when I'm uh, suspicious, when I'm overthinking everything and, and, and therefore just uh, putting myself through all of this turmoil, right? Um, the remedy to that is to remember who I am and whose I am. And that comes by faith, right? Um, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, uh, Paul's writing to Timothy and, and he says, fights the good fight of faith. I always read that scripture, fight the good fight of faith, right? So faith, um, you know, comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So I'm like, how do you fight for that? And, and to me, you know, it's in the scripture goes on, it says, take hold of, take hold of. How do you take, take hold of the, of the eternal life to which you were called? How do you grab eternal life for which you were called? How do you fight the good fight of faith? And to me, that is the way that you do that, um, is by, is by believing, is by, um, is, is by, uh, you know, uh, meditating on this truth, uh, and, and, and until it, 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 um, it stirs in your heart and, to, and, and until you begin to believe it. And that's a daily thing, right? So it's not like, okay, I believe today, I'm good. No, every day I have to get uh, with God and I have to be reminded of who God is and therefore who I am. And so it is a fight. It's a fight of faith. It's a fight to believe that what God says about me is true. That what God says about himself is true. And therefore, if those things are true, then I can find rest then I can rest and I can uh, in that find satisfaction, safety, assurance, security, right? Lord have mercy. Then I don't have to worry so much about my marriage or worry so much about my children or worry so much about what people think of me or what people don't think of me or what I think of myself. Come on now. Listen, man, I don't got to I don't have to go there, right? When I know who I am and when I know who God is, I can rest and I can enjoy my marriage and I can enjoy my children. I can enjoy my life and I can en enjoy this day. And you know what I mean? Um because of who God is and that comes by faith right and faith comes by hearing the word of God right so as we as we hear the word of God and meditate on the word of God um, our faith begins to 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 rise um, and when our faith begins to rise we are able to experience rest all right y'all follow me y'all tracking all right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, boom, 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 boom. True rest. Uh, excuse me. True rest is remembering who you are and why you are. In the Gospel of John, chapter eighteen, verse thirty-seven, um, Pontius Pilate is talking to Jesus. Jesus is about, you know, he was arrested, falsely accused, beat down, all of this wild stuff, and he's getting ready to go to the cross. Um, and Pontius Pilate is speaking to him, you know, and he says. Uh, you know, uh, basically he, he says, so he says, um, so you are a king, right? And you are a king, Pilate said. Um, and Jesus responds, uh, you say that I am a king, Jesus answered. For this reason, I was born and, and have come into the world, okay? For this reason, I was born and have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to me. Okay, why am I bringing up this verse? All right, because as I just mentioned, Jesus is uh, just, was just arrested, was taken from his family and friends, was beat down, was, uh, you know, totally, uh, um, you know, uh, abused and misused. And now they got him, uh, you know, just being uh, uh, ridiculed and shamed and, and, and they're getting ready to, to, to uh, crucify him, to kill him. And even in that, amidst all of that, uh, the pressure and the pain and the disappointment and, 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 and that struggle, even in that, he was able to, to, to speak um, to Pontius Pilate and tell him, uh, you know, who he was and why he came into the world. And I think that is a beautiful uh, picture of, you know, of a rested heart, of a heart that is at rest because we can rest when we know uh, who we are and why we are. And Jesus knew who he was and why he was. And therefore he was able to, as difficult as it was, as, uh, you know, because he did pray um, and, and that if, if it were possible that there were another way, you know, 
he would prefer another way, um, but there was no other way. So he proceeded uh, to walk this in exceedingly difficult path. Um, and the only way I believe that, that, that he was able to do that is because he was anchored um, his identity was anchored in God. He knew who he was and why he was, what he was going to do. And the scriptures actually say that. They say that that Jesus endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Uh, so he understood what was on the other side of the cross. All right, cross. So in order to rest, we need to remember. All right, in order to rest, we need to remember. The only commandment that starts with the word rest is the commandment, uh, excuse me, that don't make no sense. The only commandment that starts with the word remember is the commandment to rest did you know that the only commandment that begins with the word remember is the commandment to rest the fourth commandment uh says remember the sabbath day to keep it holy it also happens to be the only commandment that christians often are unashamed about breaking right so we we get we boast about how hard hard we work how early we get up you know how much ministry we're doing how we're serving the lord and serving people and and we're doing all of these different things and and you know those things uh, can be great but um you know uh, <laughs> it's like we applaud we applaud the person that uh that 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 works unceasingly right but but let somebody come up and give a testimony of how about how they've been resting how they've been how they've been resting and finding rest in Christ and finding rest in God and, and not being busy it might you know might not generate as much of, a, of an applause sometimes in some places it will you know that's kind of a generalization what I'm what I'm saying um but generally and not only in church just in in, in society we we applaud we admire people who work uh, crazy hard right and it's good to work hard but the thing is that rest is not really uh, something that we esteem as valuable oftentimes in our society. Rest is not something that we esteem as admirable. Rest is not something, it's just not exciting to some people, but rest is where healing happens. Rest is where, is where you, you know, even physically, right? Which is why God being, you know, uh, all wise um, made it so that every day, whether we want to or not, our body shut down and rest. It is that important. Um, you know, if you're exercising, if you're into fitness, you know, when you're exercising, you're, you're actually, you're, you kind of, you're breaking your body down, you're tearing muscles and things like that. And that's not where the growth happens. That's not where the gains happen. That's not where the improvement happens. The the improvement, the building up of muscle and the building of your body and, 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 and the healing happens when you rest, when you sleep, all right? So, Anyway, um, point number three, when you enter into God's rest, don't forget about the rest of us. All right, Deuteronomy chapter three, verse 18. Then I commanded you at that time saying, the Lord your God has given you this land to possess. All you who are brave men shall cross over the Jordan armed before your brothers and the son, sons of Israel. But your wives and your children and your cattle and, um, shall remain in your cities, which I've given you until the lord gives rest to your fellow countrymen i love this because this this uh you know when i think of rest i think of i think of uh you know god in in myself right and and god giving me rest and and and, and experiencing rest in christ but then the scripture says you know when when you begin to experience that is to now uh look outward toward your brothers and your sisters and to your, your people and to your countrymen and make sure that they too are experiencing rest right and that's a beautiful way to live right to receive from god and then to give what you have received to somebody else um to receive from god and then to give um and so it says until the lord gives rest to your fellow countrymen as he has to you and they also possess the land which the Lord your God has given them beyond the Jordan. Then each of you may return to the land which I have given you. Love that passage, man. Have you experienced anything good from God? Has God given you uh, any, uh, uh, has God done anything great in your life? You know, if you experience love from God, then love somebody else. If you experience forgiveness from God, then forgive somebody else. If you experience peace in God, then help somebody else to experience peace. If you're experiencing rest in God, then make sure that you're you're sharing that and you're helping others to experience that rest as 
well, all right. Uh, where are we? Philippians chapter two, verse five through seven. Have this same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus. Have the same attitude as Christ. Man, that's a whole sermon right there. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna preach that in a couple of weeks. Yo, because sometimes my attitude is way out of check, is way out of line. And, and you know, man, it's, it's not okay. But the scriptures say to have the same attitude as Christ. Have the same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ. So we're going to preach on attitudes in a minute and, and the dis, uh, dispositions and, and, and that sort of thing. But anyway, have the same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted. Come on now, as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. But instead, he emptied himself and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Come on now. It says that you know, his godliness was not something that he felt he had to grasp at or assert it was as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. You see, sometimes, you know, we are asserting ourselves and we're trying to assert our, um, yeah, I don't know, dominance in. We're trying to, 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 to put ourselves forward and to push ourselves and to, and to, to you know, uh, let everybody know who we are. And, and it's like, yo, as, as if you're not already that as if you're afraid of losing something, right? So it says that Jesus, even Jesus being God, didn't feel, the, the, didn't see it, um, didn't find it necessary to assert himself. Man, that's beautiful, man. That is beautiful. Can you, Lord have mercy, man. You know, sometimes I, I could be in a room and everybody's loud, you know, and everyone's, oh, boom, boom, boom. And I'm just quiet. I'm just chilling, you know what I'm saying? Because, and I, and, because I don't feel the need to assert myself. I don't feel the need to read my resume. I don't feel the need. I mean, it ain't that great anyway. I don't feel the need to, you know, and, and let me, let me, let me rephrase that. Um, because sometimes, you know, I do, sometimes I feel like I do need to say all of these things and assert myself and try and, you know, and, and that's when I'm coming from a place of unrest. I'm coming from a place of fear. I'm coming from, from a place of insecurities and doubt and all this kind of stuff. But it says that Jesus, man, he, oh man, Jesus had the same attitude as Christ, that even being equal with God did not uh, uh, use that as, as, as a, 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 a to, you know, um, excuse me, did not use it as a thing to be grasped or asserted as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. But instead, he emptied himself and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And that, to me, is a position of rest. Is a position of rest. When you know who you are and you know whose you are, and therefore you could just chill. And when it's your time to do what you're supposed to do, and do the work that God has called you to do, you do it and you do it well unto the glory of God. And when it's time for you to speak, you speak. And when it's time for you to share, you share. And when it's time to be quiet, you be quiet. And when it's time to cool out, you cool out. And when it's time to rest, which is all the time, you rest, all right? How satisfying is it to finish something? Very, um, or we can all smile today and breathe a huge sigh of relief because the greatest, most intense and eternally significant work ever is over. It's been completed. It's done. It's finished. If we can remember that, we can rest. Okay? Remember that and rest in that. Remember that and rest in that. All right? Genesis chapter 2, we talked about it. God had finished the work and so he what? rested jesus on the cross had finished the work and so he said what it is finished come on now somebody better get excited i'm excited in christ we can rest in who we are in christ we can rest in our exploration and enjoyment of this beautiful world in christ we can rest in our relationships what we can rest in our relationships in christ we can rest in our work yo I love you guys, and I pray that you experience the rest that Christ provides today. Um, let's pray. 
Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for uh, finishing the work, God, and making it possible for us to rest. We thank you, God, um, for this opportunity to, to meditate on your word and to share your word. And um, even as I'm, I'm hearing the word out loud, as I'm reading it and reciting it, it is encouraging me, it's stirring my faith, it's building me up, it's healing my body, it's healing my heart, it's healing our minds. And I pray that be the same for everyone who's listening and watching, God, that this word be life to our bones, uh, that this word bring healing and wholeness to us emotionally, Lord, so people who are experiencing, like myself, unrest emotionally, unrest mentally, unrest um, <laughs> psychologically, God, I pray that um, today that there would be a shift, that there would be a transformation as a result of your word, um, and that we would begin to experience healing in those areas, areas and wholeness um, and rest, 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 rest oh man rest god you are wonderful and worthy to be praised and we pray these things in jesus name and everybody in the place said amen love you guys see you soon peace boom bap spiritual raps the world's gone wild it's bound to collapse i heard some preachers saying christ coming back but when in when? due time son relax uh -uh. overflowing must keep going can't fall bizzle flow too original it's god ordained i must maintain high octane fight till things change Kaboom! all the redeemed in the room get your hands way up airborne like you flew